Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. Uh, yeah, I got something on the table from the folks at Kubi. So Kubi Knives and I have a long history. I have had 20 or 30 of their knives going back three or four years. Um, I've got some of their old wood-handled stuff that you used to be able to find on Amazon. Super interesting. In the last couple of years, they have absolutely turned up their production value and as an OEM, they are slaying it. And by example, if you have handled or seen my review of the Damn Designs most recent releases, those are Kubi made and they are amazing. This is the Kubi KB237 Carve and it is, well, it's awesome. And they're 49 bucks with tax, right? It, it's a reasonably priced knife. It is very, very cool to look at. Uh, it is very comfortable in hand. It is D2 blade steel uh, with a sort of modified tanto. It's got a little bit of belly and a tanto tip, which I know JB, big red EDC if you're out there, I know this is just your kind of knife. I'm just kidding. He doesn't like tantos. Uh, it's got almost a swedge across the top, right? They've milled down the edges here, chamfered down the edges, right? Up against the flats. It's got a fuller, which is just gorgeous. Of course, it has got a really generous, not finger choil, although you can get your finger in there, but you are right up against, well, I am. If you have smaller hands than I, you probably use it. But it's got a great uh, sharpening choil right at the base of the plunge. This one has got a dead even grind, both sides all the way down the blade, which of course I'm always happy to see. They've milled out the uh, flipper tab here, I think more for aesthetics than anything. It has a really good pocket clip with one sort of a bummer, and that is that it does not have a recessed screw. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's bring that up a little bit. Which means when you get to the top of this pocket clip, if you're wearing thicker jeans, you are gonna run into that screw. They were so close. But the clip itself is very nice. It's got good ramp, good spring. I've carried this thing a bunch. Forgive the little bit of schmutz right there. Uh, it's a very elegant design in, in its own way. First off, the G10 is milled out to give it a little bit of texture and character. You can see it thins out down here from, you know, towards the, towards your pinky. It is a nice, generous handle, right? It's got jimping on the blade, but it's got a single barrel spacer at the back of the knife, as you can see right there, and then the pivot, and that's it. It is a liner lock. I know some of you don't like liner and frame locks, but I do. And we are locked up at a little under 50%, which means there is a ton of life in this knife. The blade is that fantastic Kubi Stonewash. I'm going to call it Media Blasted instead of Stonewash. It is almost a flat gray. It's really attractive. The action is very good. Now, I haven't tried this yet, I think. Oh, let's try that again. Yeah, I can't quite finger flick this. But I can roll it out which is really nice. And of course the flipper tab, which has just the right amount of jimping on it, works every single time. I don't know if I can fail this, let's try. Yeah, I can. I don't know if that means that I can, let's try to rock it out. Yep, so the detent on this is out of a 10, it's a six, six and a half. Uh, look, it's a $50 knife. Is it, you know? Absolutely perfect. No, I love the fact that the uh, barrel spacer in the back is held on by a screw underneath the pocket clip, and it's got this just nice little inset screw right there on that side. The shape of this thing is marvelous. Following with the uh, sort of milling along the top of the blade. Let's see if I can get that to show. Look at that. See how that's done? So there's a peak, and then it comes down off the peak. Uh, it's got a beautiful ramp, as I mentioned, right here for your thumb. The jimping is a little soft could be a little harder, but because of this ramp right here, your thumb doesn't thumb doesn't feel like it's going to get away from you. Um, the rest of this is knocked down and chamfered very well. It is a steel, so it is a steel liner lock, as I mentioned, and there is a liner on both sides. There are some holes drilled in it. I'm not even going to call that milling because there's just one, two, three holes on the inside liner, but none on the lock side. So it's not a light knife, but I don't think it's supposed to be. It is... Cool looking, great to use, and very comfortable in hand. Let's get the uh, basic specs out of the way, as we are wont to do. So you get three inches of cutting on three and a half inches of D2. The uh, grip area from behind the choil, the, the choil, it's been a long day. From behind the flipper tab, one, two, three, and 
almost three and three quarters inches, which is why it fits my hand so incredibly well. Right. It is a nice long knife. The overall knife in length, if we do it this way, is just shy. Yeah, just shy of eight inches. So seven point inch, seven point eight inches overall, which is a really nice size. It's got a good closed profile. It does have a bit of a pocket pecker. All due respect, to Nick Shabazz. Why don't we put that where you guys can see it. So the closed profile without the tab, we're looking at uh, just a little over an inch and a quarter. And with the tab, we're coming out to an inch and a half. But again, everything is sort of softened, right? There's no sharp edges here to dig into stuff that's in your pocket, which I like. And again, it is really, an I keep saying again, and also, hmm, it is a very attractive knife. Now this has been out for quite a while. This is not a new knife from the folks at Kubi. Uh, I've had this for a year. Um, I was digging through my stuff and was like, oh man, I never reviewed that. So I put it in my pocket and I carried it for a week. And I'm glad that I did because it has been a joy to carry and a joy to use. Now, Kubi has a habit of making their budget stuff into premium stuff. So Kubi, if you're listening, and you know, of course you are, why wouldn't you to my tiny little channel? Make a premium version of this. Give me titanium, use your Austen steel, you know, whatever, and I would buy one. And I think a lot of people would. Uh, it is just a cool looking knife. If you're a fan of Tanto Blades, and I am, so that works out beautifully for me. Let's do some size comparisons. We're gonna line it up on that edge. I know it's a little off kilter, but yeah, man, we are just so close to eight inches, but not quite there. Here it is against the full size Adamus. As you can see, the Adamus is a much bigger knife in all respects and all regards, but you, know, you get more cutting and more everything. Here it is against the uh, full-size Presidio 2. Again, it is much smaller than that. What do we have on the table that's interesting? How about the NCC MK1-RC? This is a Chopin design custom. <laughs> As you can see, it's bigger than that. There is a full review of this coming down the road. I really like this thing. Let's do the bug out since it's out on the table. Very similar in blade to the bug out, but you get more handle with the uh, the carve. And you know, I said earlier that you don't wanna put your finger here, but you really can. You just need to be careful, right? So it is a sharpening choil that is big enough. And because of the shape back here, you can pull back. So if you're cutting in this way, yeah, you're, you're pretty safe. But you, again, you're going to want to be careful because the edge is right there. It does have, as I mentioned, a marvelous tanto with, with a little bit of belly. So if you're slicing through stuff that needs belly, you've got it. And of course, if you needed to scrape, but please don't scrape with your knives. But if you needed to, that tanto tip is really going to serve you, right? Also, it's good for media. I cut... Well, the same thing, I've said this in all my videos, same things I always cut. And this did a remarkable job. Now, again, since I don't run my knife into staples or other hard materials, there's nothing to show for it. But this thing has been an absolute joy to use. And for 50 bucks, I mean, <laughs> come on. It feels a little heavy in hand. For, oh, excuse me. Wow. Let's just rock the whole world there, why don't we? I do love the action on that thing. All right. So, where do we weigh out? Do, do. Oh, come on, ancient scale, you can do it. I hear you guys out there pulling for me. Yeah, come on, old scale. All right. Yeah, 4.7 ounces, you know, for just under eight inch knife, it's not too bad. I mean, I don't have anything on the table. It's just that size to compare it to, but you know, look, I know some of you are going to say that's too heavy for EDC, but it isn't for me. And because of the way the knife is designed, it, it pockets very well. It's really an enjoyable knife. Let's take a look and see what uh, they give us. I'm going to say that's four millimeters of D2. All right. Oops, well, I was close. Wow. Three and a half millimeters. Well, I'm off today. Looks thicker than it is, and I don't know why that is. It must be the way that they did the chamfering on the sides. 
that's a trip. The handle itself, at its thickest point, is 13.4 millimeters, which is just over a half inch. The liner lock is super accessible. Right? You can see it when I hold it flat. It is well above the show side scale. You get to it really easily and the knife just closes beautifully. And even though I've had this for a year, it is still dead centered. I've almost never had a problem with Kubi knives. Uh, this is no exception. I do love their KB pivot, right? They're easy to take apart, easy to clean, easy to use. Their D2, which they've been doing for years now, has never given me an issue. In fact, um, some of my other budget D2 knives, Ganzo and some other stuff, uh, you know, they're D2. I've seen the D2 sort of pocket sweat rust thing happen. Never on a Kubi knife. And maybe it's this media blasted, I don't even know what they do, but boy, I'll tell you, it doesn't take rust very easily. Now, of course it is D2. So if you live in a swamp, this is not the knife for you, but for the rest of us, it really is an excellent tool. These are available on Amazon. You can get them on the Kubi website and Amazon, they're $48 and some change. So then what is the final analysis? Well, the final analysis is this. If you were looking for a good knife that is interesting in design, cuts very well, carries very well, made by a company that is absolutely slaying it with their overall quality right now, the Kubi KB237 Carve may very well be a knife for you. I hope you've enjoyed the look at it. I know I've enjoyed finding it in my collection and bringing it to you. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time.